on the state APC primary. Lucky Aye Datiwa declared winner as one of the contestants Wale Akitenwa says Ododo forged election result. And Kogi please detain Yaya Bello's ADC and other security details. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. No lucky I hear that you are of Ondo State has emerged as the All Progressives Congress APC candidate for the upcoming governorship election on November 16. He secured the nomination with a significant victory, receiving 48,568 votes in the primaries. Iowa Kifalani came in second with 15,343 votes, followed by Chief Olushola with 14,865 votes. The announcement was made by Ahmed Ododo, the chairman of the Governorship Primary Election Committee and governor of Kogi State, who emphasized the competitive nature of the primaries. The primaries witnessed active participation from party members and supporters across the 18 council areas of Ondo State. With the nomination secured, Aye Datiwa and the APC will now focus on consolidating support and preparing for the November election. Francis A. Fadwili, 353. Ife Oluwa O. Oye Dele, 462. Lucky. Oh, I hate that you are 48,569. By the power conferred on the committee and in line with the APC guidelines for the nomination of candidates of the party in the general election, I, Ahmed Usman Odudu, Hereby declare that Lucky Orimisan I that you are having satisfied the requirement of the law and scored the highest number of lawful votes cast in the direct primary election conducted on the 20th day of April 2024 in Ondo State is hereby returned, elected, and he is declared the winner of the Ondo State APC governorship primary election. The greatness of Ondo State is what matters at this moment. I understand that I must leave no stone unturned in order to cement the trust you have graciously to put that on me. I therefore request that we all join hands together in building the future that we all yet in on those states. However, one of the all progressive congresses, APCs, governorship aspirants in the state, Wale Akintelinwa, has alleged that the outcome of the primary election was fabricated in a statement issued the Monday morning in Akure by a spokesperson for his campaign organization, Shegun Ajiboye. Akitariwa accused Governor Osman Dodo, the chairman of the APC primary election committee, of orchestrating the writing and forging of the election result. The governorship aspirant asserted 
that the declaration of Governor Lucky Ayer that he was the winner of the election did not accurately reflect the reality of the exercise. Akitariwa claimed that no primary election took place in any of the 203 wards of the state. Instead, Governor Dodo purportedly arrived in the state on Saturday morning and proceeded to fabricate election results without any actual voting taking place, denouncing the APC's primary election process as a disgraceful spectacle. Joining us from Undo State is a lawyer and a political analyst, Alan Shewure. And we also have joining us from Lagos, a political analyst, Mayowa Alakija. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you. Uh, Shewure, let's start with you. You, you are... You are literally at the theater of, uh, uh, okay, let me watch my language. You are literally in Ondo State. How would you, what would be your response to, amongst others, the one captured in the prologue by the Akiterinwa, Akiterinwa uh, uh, group or, or side of, the of the elections yeah let me let me start by first uh, commending the uh, committee the on those states apc primary uh, governorship primary election committee headed by the governor of kogi state usman Dodo, for their tenacity patience and uh, um hard working election is not an easy task uh, let me equally commend all the 16 aspirants who participated in this election. Mm -hmm. And I will agree with me that an election that 16 people participated, somebody must emerge. Uh, so it, it is understandable when you see those who feel that probably they should have uh, won the election are uh, coming out to allege uh, imperfection. And as a matter of fact, all over the world, there are no perfect elections. When you are dealing with human beings, a lot of factors uh, are coming. Uh, so, but largely, I must say, uh, uh, with the sincerity of a child and the boldness of a lion, that largely the election uh, was uh, credible. I, I live in Akure. Well, on that particular day, I drove through Akure South to Ondo East, Ondo West to Digbo, to Okupa, to Rili, to SL, to where uh, I come from. And I see a lot of people troop out to participate. And I, I, I witness in my own world in the Rili, in uh, at uh, St. John Primary School in Okupa. So uh, we, can, uh, we can safely say, because I was. I was just waiting to ask you, in view of the way you started by commending the uh, elections committee and the and the contestants. I was just wondering: Are you supposedly an analyst on this occasion, or you are a partisan of the APC and? Given your own opinion now, one could safely assume that you are indeed a partisan of, not only a partisan of APC, but probably a supporter of Aye Can uh, that no, be safely no, no, assumed? Let me, let me say this, that all stakeholders were invited to the declaration, and I attended, and I saw that at one o'clock, the committee members were still there. If you see people who have left their home, a uh, governor for that matter, try to ensure that the T's were crossed and the I's were dotted. Uh, it was some commendation. And I told you that I equally drove, I passed through some of this local government and I saw uh, for myself some of this, not necessarily as a 
partisan politician. We must say the truth. Election is not an easy task, particularly in the and, uh, and uh, when you said some stakeholders were invited, you attended in what capacity, in what specific capacity as a stakeholder? I attended as a media person. As a media person. Okay. Let yes. me go to let me go to your colleague. I'll be back. I'll be back uh, in a jiffy. Um, I'm with you here. Yeah, Maya, you. what would be your first shot regarding uh, the prologue that I read to introduce you gentlemen to the program? Actually, the result of the election was a bit um, like a shocker to me. Because I was not Why? expecting the outcome of the result of the election. Um, if you consider the what has happened for the past three months or four months to the election, you wouldn't imagine that the person that won the election in terms of the incumbent governor, um, Nokia Yeda, would be the one that will emerge as the candidate of the APC. And um, there are so many background stories and some things we have seen on ground. I've been followed up the situation on ground that led to the primary election. The first instance is that there was an argument if the election would be direct or indirect primary. But we all know the political analysts and the people within the political arena are very aware, in respect of any party that you belong to, that, um, that um, the direct or indirect primary is a major factor that determines who becomes the candidate of the party. So if the party is interested in who becomes the candidate, yeah. they try to go by the virtue of um, indirect primary. But if the, if the party wants to stand neutral, then they, put, they, they throw it out that the party member, in terms of every registered party member, should have a stay of voice in who becomes the next candidate of the party. And this is a very serious issue because initially I've been following up, I'm not in a career on those states, but I've been there twice in between before the primary and I've talked to so many people on the ground. Um, the interest of the majority is that the primary should be indirect so that um, the major stakeholders can have a stake. But um, the, the party itself, that is why I so much like the party. Um, as, as in what APC have done in this Undo state. And I want to employ them to replicate the same issue across the board by going by the virtue of direct primary so that every stakeholder, if I'm a registered party member, I should have a voice and who becomes my next governor. Because it goes a long way in determining what will happen to the state and the position of the party along the line. Uh, hello, hello, so, my wife, yeah. I think it is important they are a bit more concise. You seem to me to be flip-flopping with your opinion. Are okay. you agreeing with the allegations out there that the election was not free and fair? Or are you convinced that, like you just stated now, that the APC impressed you by allowing the, the primary to be direct? Are you saying that what came out of that direct election is satisfactory to you? It is very much satisfactory to me, and I will tell you why. It's simple and straight that forward. If, we, if they have handled it by indirect election, they would have said that they gave the um, delegate 10 million era or 5 million era or 1 million era to vote. But these are the party members that voted during the election. And if you agree with me that there is no perfect election, on a normal day, even though be it as it may, we will still have a level of aggrieved members of the party or candidate that will always say that the election does not go in their direction. As a result, they will find so many reasons why they have to, you know, um, damage the process of the election or the outcome of the election, which is normal. Um, I believe the party will be able to sit down on the round table and solve the problem so, amicably. So I am you are, my you are, is that. Hello, sir. Are you, are you uh, listening? I, 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 want to, I want to ask you a follow-up question before I go back to your okay, colleague. Okay, I'm listening. Uh, so, you are one who believes that uh, an election with an electorate that is less than 100,000 members of the party 
at least from the results we've seen now, the cumulative uh, number of those who purportedly or allegedly cast their votes would be technically less than, say, maximum 150,000. You are one who believes as a political analyst that uh, that that excuse or that uh, uh, euphemistic phraseology should be there's no perfect election anywhere in the world. So a party in, a, in, a, in an age such as this, with all the technologies available to a human being, when in a single day you have millions of people transacting financial services with just their phone, the two of you have agreed as analysts that I think I think I need to make something clear right now. Are you with me, sir? Uh, now we need to be we need to look at statistics globally, and we have to drill it down to Nigeria perspective. Globally, in India, they are running their election currently. The the biggest democracy in the world. So to, in, the biggest democracy, and the turnout of voters. You can never see it anywhere that is more than 55%. Go and research and check it. So if you are saying that the people that vote during the primary election are less than 150,000, so what is the actually what is the first, what is the number of the registered member of the party in one in, in one in, in a particular location? You know, you know, you know what has so dragged me the most. Understand the figure in question. You, you so know, you, are, you know what I, I know. I Hello? You know what has gladdened me the most? What has gladdened me the most is that the India that you've just alluded to, cumulatively in that elections, in India's general elections, cumulatively more than 800 million human beings. That is about four times the population of Nigeria will be casting their votes. What and you know what? Hello? And you know, listen, listen. So Mayawa, back to on those states. Listen, Mayawa, and if you if you are looking to India um, and irrespective of the pre electioneering uh, accusations against Modi's party, BJP has been you know has been <laughs> the irrespective of that, you will agree with me that an election involving less than one hundred and fifty thousand people. It is very for a Nigerian of your age, especially a Nigerian of your age, to be excusing away the fact that an election of less than 150,000 people, uh, no, there is no perfect election. I, 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 I'm shaking emotionally. You know why? My point, because, uh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. My point concerns what is perfect election. I'm trying to use figures to analyze my to analyze my perception now, and I think we need to be to be understanding in order to look at things holistically the point is the what is okay the, let me go to your colleague the back. figure of registered member of the party in other states uh, let me let me go to your colleague you back. that it is less than one fifty thousand people that voted in the just concluded primary election what is the percentage of the less than one fifty thousand people that voted in the primary election let's uh, now look at it versus the total number of the registered member in other states then we can have a Kind of we are not speaking of the total. Of, in terms of what we are not speaking of. of we are not speaking of the total number of electors in Ondo State. We are speaking to an election with the electorate. You must remember that this election was party specific. It was and not the a. Electorate it, complaining. It is the candidate that are complaining. Uh, okay, let let, let me go to your colleague Abuba. Uh, Alan Shawera. Party that is complaining yes. currently. Uh, Alan Shawera. Thank you. Uh, were you at any point in time as somebody who is on terra firma on the state? Were you at any point in time PV to before a credible election can hold anywhere in the world? There must be, there must be the ascertainment of eligible voters. I, I, I believe we agree on that. Well, did you see any of the sessions that speaks to the power eligibility or accreditation 
of the eligible voters before the votes were purportedly cast and the election results announced. Did you witness any? Because you, unfortunately, the other gentleman was not literally in Ondo, but you were in Ondo and you visited some of the uh, some of the centers. Did you see that? Uh, thank you. See, election globally is a function of law. And that's why we want to take you through the electoral art of Nigeria and the APC law. Now, this particular election were con uh, was conducted in compliance to the provision of the electoral act, uh, the, the Nigeria electoral act, which uh, stipulates that you go for consensus, indirect or direct. In this case, the APC went for the direct mode of primary. Now, uh, to your question, the direct mode, uh, mode of primary, the APC went for what is called revalidation of its members. In other words, you are a member, but they want to be sure that you are still a member and that you are still alive. So part of the timetable was that there was a revalidation process. At the end of that revalidation process, we had from the voters register or no, total number of uh, members, about 171,000 uh, registered. So the very, the, there are 203 wars where the election took place. Before the election, there was accreditation of these revalidated members. Then they formed lines, they, in other words, they queue behind their preferred choice. And the electoral committee member assigned to that ward count their number on many occasions. You see the video. So, after that, there was a revalidation or affirmation process. The APC equally provides for the second aspect, which has to do with the delegate, five, five from each of the unit. There are more than 1,000 units in all those states. So the five of them converge in a hall. And after the electoral committee announced the result of the primary, the five five that have been selected earlier. Now, one after the other, one unit after the other, or unanimously confirm or affirm that this is their preferred candidate. The two processes I witnessed yesterday, and I witnessed it, and all of them comply so, with these provisions. So, and uh, I was trying so to I want to... Be Belie believing, believing that you are a fair observer of uh, the electioneering process yesterday, uh, oh, sorry, a day before yesterday, believing, oh, that, believing that you were a fair observer, I want to believe that you are indirectly saying Niger the, the electoral umpire in Nigeria or the elections management body in Nigeria should actually go to those state to go and learn how to conduct credible elections because you witnessed that. Let, 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 me, so let, me, let me come to that particular angle that you did not ever allow me to land be, before you caught me. I think me. I have interest in this question. I, I, was, I was trying to tell you that the election were not perfect as a matter of fact. Well, the imperfection of the election were attributed or could be attributed to some of the challenges we have in Nigeria as a nation. The, some of our attitude, the level of insecurity. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Between you and uh, I, the challenges uh, that the political class deliberately allows to to continue before because they know how to use that challenges again to, to play to their own advantage. Nigeria is not so backward. Uh, you are talking to you are talking to a student of technology from cyber security to pro, uh, you know to programming to this thing. So Nigeria is not backward. Though. Some of the some of the things that we do in Nigeria and some of the skills that people daily hire from all over the world from Nigeria. If the Nigerian political class allows 
that those skills be deployed for the integrity of our election. There should be we shouldn't be speaking in the times we are speaking now. Just to no, put that let state. Me, yeah, let, let me tell you one of one of the challenges. For instance, you are you are a media house. You should have a reporter in Odose to give you uh uh, an update in that election, but perhaps we couldn't do it because of a uh, logistic or some of these challenges that we are talking about. What not, even, you? not even in the richest, not even in the richest democracies, liberal democracies in the world. Does every <laughs> TV station, does every I TV know. station have a correspondent on the ground? You work with local stations. That is why if you're watching, if you're watching a network in America, you will hear the name of the local station, KTN Texas. Reporting for it's it's simple economics. It doesn't. Yes, have... so that, that, that's why I'm saying that I can tell you some of the. Okay, let me go to a colleague, please. Let's let's go to a colleague, please. Sorry about that. I, I need right. to give him the opportunity to. Uh, my brother, you 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 go for it. Hundred percent. You go for it earlier on, and you see as cynical as the laughter was. It, it, I presume that we were agreeing, but maybe. You are just making fun of me. <laughs> Go for it. Actually, um, both of us, we agree. And the, all the media houses in Nigeria, globally, we agree that there is no how you conduct an election, either primarily at the party level or a general election, that you will not have some level of issues that the oppositions of people that lost out of the election, we have questions to answer. After the election, it happens in America. In America, oh, yes, oh, I, I need to agree with you. Let's let's but let's use that. Day, let's come back to those things. I, I agree with you, and, and let's use that point of agreement to close shop for today, because the back the backroom boys are practically, you know, telling me about time we ended it. Thank you, gentlemen, for for guesting on plus politics this this uh today. Uh, some of the time. We, we will share this platform together again. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Audience, uh, we will be back okay, after this short break. Thank you.